Hey guys, I was recently at Frost Museum of Science to do my regular checkup and wanted to film to give you guys an update on the 100% aquaculture and captive bread exhibit. For those of you guys who's been following this channel, welcome back. And for those of you guys that's just tuning in, I welcome you guys and let me fill you guys in on this project before the brand new update. About five years ago, I was fighting an uphill battle to spread awareness of how our hobby was under constant attack and how we are time after time accused falsely as the scapegoat of what is wrong of what is negatively impacting the ocean at the time. Being a reporter for reefs.com, I was given access to a few of the top aquaculture and captive breeding facilities in the country and, and had the idea to educate people outside of our niche hobby and have people know the truth of how we are sustainable hobby and promote the hobby in a more positive light. For example, how the hobby has and is helping out the scientists around the world to make huge advancements in conservation and restoration efforts with our data, experience, and our hobby-grade equipments. Idea of 100% aquaculture and captive bread exhibit was born. Then I went to my friends at Frost Museum of Science and presented the idea. We had a green light shortly after and it was a go. I called up my friends in the industry and many of them without any hesitation and at times not even hearing what was happening they just said sure of course and asked what they can do to get this project started ecotech marine donated the lights and return pumps neptune systems donated apex controller doser return pump as well as many of their modules and accessories real reef donated boxes and boxes of rocks of our choosing ACI Aquaculture, Carolina Aquatics, Pirates Reef, Worldwide Corals, 24-7 Aquariums, Biota Aquariums, CN Reef donated all the livestock, and I personally drove all over the state of Florida to handpick many of the specimens for this exhibit. Setting up public aquarium exhibits have many challenges and limitations, and these are few. We have to get permission for every single step that we take forward. We can't have anything on the surface of the exhibit displays, which meant that we would have to figure out a creative way to make random yet powerful enough flow so that animals can thrive inside. We also can't work on them during the hours that they are open. I relied heavily on their amazing curator team and to their credit, they did a fantastic job. Check out and see all the rock work being made, how closed loop system was creatively incorporated and see how the water would jet out from different parts of the actual rock structure to provide the flow that these corals need in order to thrive in this exhibit. Whole exhibit was pretty much made in an underground floor and then lifted with the heavy machinery and was transported to, with an elevator to the third floor and it was set up early hours in the morning before they opened to the general public. And like that, this exhibit was created and it was a lot of work in itself. This was how everything was when we were getting started. Beautiful corals and fish. However, you can see that it's still pretty bare due to the size of the frags. And this is how it looks now as of March 2nd of this year. Paul, the curator that takes care of this exhibit, tells me that they must frag weekly now so that the acros and other SPS won't grow onto the glass. This is such a good thing to hear. Many of the overgrown corals have made their ways to the different exhibits around the museum, like the massive GBR exhibit on the first floor. And check out this huge bird nest coral that I picked up from Julian Sprung sitting on the top of this aquarium. Strawberry shortcake, one of my favorite acropora is growing nicely. Look at all these tapering acroporas and milliporas. Check out their polyp extensions. You can see how happy they are. Ganyoporas and space invader pectinias are also doing amazing in the bottom, mostly away from everything else due to their insane stinging capabilities. From what the curators tell me, this exhibit 
is one of the highlights of this museum and thousands of people on a weekly basis stop by and check this exhibit out to see all the animals, read the literature that goes with it, and I hope that they walk away with some information about the fish, corals, aquarium science, and the ocean. Hopefully, it will spark an inspiration for a young future scientist, a chorist that will take our work to the next level. I absolutely love the fact that we were able to do this. I am extremely grateful to everyone that has helped to make this project a reality. And I am so looking forward to creating another one, hopefully this year. I have a very clear idea of what I want to do next for the second exhibit. And I hope to share with you guys in the very near future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have a great day. If you guys liked the video, please comment on the comment section below. What was your favorite part? And if you have a guess on what the second exhibit is going to be, please leave a comment in the comment section down below as well. I would love to see what you guys think and are speculating. Thank you so much for watching again, guys, and you guys have a great day.